a little update on the Tigrinus catfish, Brachyplatis noma tigrinum. So you may remember that we got five initially from predatory fins, one of them died. They came in ammonia laced water trying to jump out of it. One of them uh, died the same week, so we got a replacement, but he's smaller in the other tank. These are the four originals. As you can see, each of them has more or less their own little territory to their liking. When they run into each other, they fight. They fight violently. They hate each other with passion. But they don't pursue each other far. I mean, they just fight. The, the, the winner remains. The loser runs off a little bit, not too far and then everything's back to normal. So this guy's probably our biggest right now. He's about a foot, maybe a little over. If it was tip to tip, not including the extensions of course. He's showing off. Look at me from behind, look at me from from the front. They have a pleco and a marble lungfish for tank mates right now. So they came at about, uh, I want to say, three inches or so. So that's a growth of about eight inches on average for them, I would say. Since May, today is November, end of November. So that gives us about half a year. In half a year they put on about 8 inches. That's not too bad for them, that's about normal. About an inch a month. Maybe slightly more. They really sulk for... Uh, they're still sulking actually. Because they used to have uh, Nile perch and uh, Baramundi perch as tank mates and, uh, and the three arowana which were way too big as the other tank in the tank on the other side the replacement one and when I was it took me, it was very violent when I was catching them that's ten big fish they were running all over the tank and the tigs were salting, sulking for about a week after, after I took those tank mates out they didn't want to eat except for the biggest guy. The biggest guy ate a little. The three hour, the three others didn't want to eat. But they started eating little by little. So it goes to show you that they can be sensitive. Even though they were not the target and they were completely ignored when I was catching the other ones, but they took it rather hard. They don't take pellets for me anymore, or maybe they ha never have, I, I forgot. They just take fish pieces. This is the replacement guy. He's probably about a couple inches behind. Maybe about 10-ish, 9-10 inches right now. Tip to tip. He occupied that little log here, he really liked it. But the placo that was donated, uh, that was rescued yesterday, he evicted him out. Or that the placo claimed that uh, log. So now he's uh, back in into his uh, half circular hiding hole. That looks like a fake pine trunk. Uh, I think this guy takes some pellets still and also fish. They're rather sedentary fish, they, they don't really readily come out and look for food when I'm feeding. They just wait for the food to come to them or to be dropped on their head or 
to be brought to them by flow. It seems like this may be consistent with how they hunt primarily in the, in the wild too. They just sit in the flow with all the whiskers spread out, trying to see if anything flows by or swims by too close and then they snatch it real quickly. By the way, the last guy also is, came jumping out of water. I kind of forgot at that moment, but uh, as a reminder, I I was reminded, and I'm now reminding you that you should use uh, Amalok or some other ammonia treatment when a fish comes over jumping out of water and stressed by ammonia especially when you open the bag a lot more ammonia is produced as the carbon dioxide escapes and the pH changes from acidic to more alkaline that releases a lot of ammonia, additional ammonia in the water so that's very dangerous All right. Nevertheless, all five, five out of six, survived this ammonia treatment. Thank goodness the shipping was overnight and they haven't spent that much time in their bags. They were individually bagged nicely, but even at three inches and uh, about 12 hours in transport they came suffering badly from ammonia I pretty much feed them by tweezers right now just bring it to their mouth and they snatch it if they're hungry because if I just lay, leave it laying around not all of them not all the time they go out looking for it because they know there is other tigerness in their tank and they don't want to run into them and get attacked I suppose or maybe they would I mean I'm not sure I forgot how it was when I used to keep Tigris alone whether they would come out and look for food smelling the food in the water or, or whether it mostly still needed to be dropped right in front of them or within the striking within the striking radius Some of you may remember our unfortunate uh, experiment with 10 or 11 adult ticks, which we lost one by one, I think to thiaminase, and the ensuing vitamin B1 deficit. So now they're getting their uh, frozen thawed fish properly fortified with B1 and other vitamins and minerals. We fortify them with B1 powder and uh, Vitacam solution by pre-silking. <laughs>